Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Financial Wealth and Health Podcast. My name is Isabel Rothy, a financial advisor and certified financial planner at Desert Wealth Management, and I'm also the host of this podcast. And it's my goal to help families, retirees, and young couples work toward financial freedom. One of my favorite ways to talk about different financial concepts is by talking about the similarities between financial wealth and financial health. I truly believe that in order to become financially wealthy and financially free, you need to be financially healthy first. Let's grow our financial wealth and health together. In today's podcast episode, we are in episode two of our series all about investing basics. Last week, we talked all about why we should invest our money, and this week, we're getting a little bit more complex in the topics. We're talking about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange-traded funds. We're talking about growth versus value investing. We're talking about market capitalization. So it's a little bit more complex, but I hope that it provides a great base of education for you. There's much more intricacies to these topics above and beyond what I'm talking about today. I didn't want to go too far in the weeds, but I did want to educate all of you listeners out there about these topics. If you would like to learn more about any of these topics that I discussed today, I will link a lot of the articles I quote in the show notes and the description box of this episode if you want to read more of those articles. But if you have other questions about investing that you'd like to ask me, you definitely can click the link in the show notes or description box below to book a free call with me and we could see if we're a good fit to work together and we could talk about investing and investment education. So I just wanted to share that with you all. A disclaimer I want to share before we begin is that this podcast episode is not considered advice. It is an educational resource. I don't know your specific situation, so I can't give specific advice, but I do hope that this educates you and shares some insight about investing. So without further ado, let's dive into our episode today. So we're going to be looking at the definition of what a stock is and what a bond is. For those of you watching on the video, I have my whole list of notes set out right in front of me on this side of the screen. So if you see me looking down periodically, that's why. But the basic definition of a stock, in my own words, is that a stock is an investment tool that represents the ownership of part of a company. When you own a stock, you own part of the company and can participate in the company's performance. Now for my definition of a bond, a bond is also known as a fixed income investment. So a bond is an investment tool that represents a loan that a company makes to an investor. Bonds are used by companies, states, and governments to borrow money for projects. There is a maturity on the bond, which is essentially the term of the loan. Once the loan or bond matures, the investor receives their money, also known as the face value, back to them. Also, in return for loaning money to a company or the government, the investor receives income normally every six months from the borrower. The interest rate is also called the coupon rate. And this is why a bond is considered a fixed income investment tool because it's earning a fixed income every six months. So those are the basics of what a stock is and a bond is. Now some investors buy individual stocks, some buy individual bonds, but a lot of investors also buy mutual funds and exchange traded funds. So let's discuss some of the definitions of those. My definition of a mutual fund is that it's a basket of stocks, bonds, and other securities from different companies and governments that is run by an investment management firm. When I say governments, I'm mainly meaning bond funds because some bond funds have government bonds in the bond fund, so just keep that in mind. The investment management firm monitors the performance and quality of the mutual funds and makes adjustments when needed. Mutual funds usually match a certain investment objective. Now, I'm going to specifically talk about some details on bond funds. As with uh, mutual funds that hold stocks, it's uh, pretty easy to understand, but with bonds having a couple uh, different parts of the investment, sometimes it's hard to understand how that fits into a mutual fund. So let's chat a little bit more about bond funds specifically specifically. So as we've mentioned, a bond fund is a basket of many different bonds. Bond funds don't have a specific maturity date like a normal bond does because a bond fund is a collection of many different bonds. And usually the income payments in a bond fund are monthly, whereas an individual bond is semi-annual payments. So a little bit different there. 
Um, but it, de- it does depend on the mutual fund policy of how often they share their income payments. Usually it's monthly, though. And this income can be reinvested back into the bond fund or it can be distributed to the investor, whatever the investor would like to do. Now, when it comes to the income stream, a bond fund fluctuates a little bit in its periodic income distributions because there's many different bonds inside the bond fund. Whereas with a traditional singular bond, the investor knows how much income they'll receive periodically due to the fixed coupon interest rate on the bond. So keep that in mind. Finally, a bond fund can promote diversification and flexibility. When it comes to flexibility, since there is no maturity on a bond fund, you could buy and sell when you want to. So that's kind of how bonds play a role in mutual funds. I hope that sheds some light on this topic. Well, now let's talk about an exchange-traded fund, also known as an ETF. For the sake of simplicity, I will say ETF moving onward, but know that that stands for exchange-traded fund. So very similar to a mutual fund, an ETF is a basket of stocks, bonds, or other securities. And an ETF does trade on an exchange just like a stock trades on an exchange. Exchange traded funds are usually considered passive funds, while mutual funds are usually active funds. But an ETF can also be an active ETF, just depending on uh, the manager and the company that holds the ETF. Now, the main difference between an active and a passive fund is that an active fund, a fund manager is usually choosing investments and doing trades within a fund, whereas a passive fund usually means that the fund is tracking an index. And a passive fund is usually trying to match an index, whereas an active fund is trying to outperform a benchmark. So their performance metrics are a little bit different. With an ETF and a mutual fund, another difference is that the price of an ETF fluctuates throughout the day since it's listed on an exchange, while a mutual fund is priced once a day after market closes. So that is another way that they differ. There's still a basket of investments, but there's a couple different details of each that are slightly different. And ETFs usually have lower expenses than mutual funds. Not always, but usually, because usually ETFs are a little bit more passive than mutual funds. Like I said, not in every case, but typically that's usually the way that works. And while we're talking about portfolio creation, a lot of people choose just to have funds in their accounts, so mutual funds or exchange traded funds. Some people like to just have stocks, just have bonds. Some people like to have a mixture of all of those and they have different investing styles within their portfolios. So that is the beauty of portfolio creation. It's unique to you and there's so many different ways that you can create your portfolio because there's so many tools at hand. So that's one of the reasons that investing is so exciting. So now let's talk about the style of investing, value versus growth investing. We'll chat about that and then I'll talk about how that plays a role in someone's portfolio. So value investing is a strategy where an investor buys a stock that is trading for less than its intrinsic value. The goal of the value investor is that the market recognizes the value of the stock and that the trading price of the undervalued stock grows to reflect its intrinsic value. According to an article on The Motley Fool by Dan Kaplinger on November 16th, 2023, he says value investing is an investment strategy that focuses on stocks that are underappreciated by investors and the market at large. The stocks that value investors seek typically look cheap compared to the underlying revenue and earnings from their businesses. Investors who use the value investing strategy hope the stock price will rise as more people come to appreciate the true intrinsic value of the company's fundamental business. So when it comes to value investing, like this article says, uh, investors try to take a look at companies that are maybe undervalued compared to their actual intrinsic value, essentially purchasing them while they're undervalued, hoping that the market will correct to reflect its actual intrinsic value that's higher than what it's at today. So that's the basics of value investing. Once again, it gets much more complex than that, but for simplicity's sake, we're keeping the definition pretty simple. So now I want to talk about dividends. Some value stocks pay what's called a dividend, which is a payment made by the company or the fund to share part of its profits with stockholders. Some companies that are more growth focused, as we'll talk about, take all their profits and reinvest it back in the company. But dividend paying companies take some of that profit 
and give it to the stockholders as a part of their return. And so that's something that some value companies do. It's a way that value investors can get a stream of income on top of the price appreciation of the investment. So that's the basics of value investing that we're talking about in today's podcast episode. Now let's chat about growth investing. Growth investors primarily focus on companies that have the potential to have above average earnings growth. Capital appreciation is the focus really for the company to generate capital appreciation over the long term. And many growth companies, like I said, they reinvest their profits rather than paying dividends because they want to grow as fast and as much as possible. According to a Smart Asset article by Rebecca Lake on May 8th, 2023, growth investing is all about finding stocks to invest in that could potentially outpace the market in terms of returns. Investors who follow this strategy are interested in choosing companies that are actively growing and offer the best chance of long-term capital appreciation. In other words, growth investors want to own companies they could sell for a sizable profit later. So when it comes to value versus growth investing, a value investor is more looking at the intrinsic value of the investment to see if it's undervalued and if it will grow back to its intrinsic value. And a growth investor is taking a look at the company, seeing how much it can grow over time with its earnings and capital appreciation. There's this great article on Nerd Wallet by Anna Louise Jackson as of January 4th, 2023. And she says, value investors look for companies that have already earned their stripes and have a stock price that's lower than it should be and may raise, rise again to reflect that. Growth investors look for companies with future potential and expect the stock price to increase, even if it's already relatively high, as the companies reach or exceed that potential. Same desired destination, different ways of getting there. So a lot of investors like to have a mixture of growth and value investments in their portfolio, whether they are looking at individual stocks or mutual funds or exchange traded funds. So many different mutual funds and exchange traded funds have different levels of growth focus, different levels of value focus. It's really fascinating to research, but some investors, they are diehard growth or value. Some people like to have a mixture, and that's where, like I said, that's the fun in portfolio creation is you get to decide what kind of investor you are and what kind of companies you want to invest in. Now, before we close today's podcast episode, the final topic we will discuss is market capitalization. So market capitalization is the price per share of a stock multiplied by the total outstanding shares of stock. So essentially, it's the total value of a company's outstanding stock shares. For example, if there were 1 million shares outstanding of a company and each share cost $10, the market capitalization, also known as market cap, would be $10 million. So like I said, it's the total value of a company's outstanding shares of stock. Now, when we're looking at different levels of market cap, this is where we're going to be tying up today's episode as I share an example of different common investment terms you may see. Market capitalization is organized in a couple different buckets. So when it comes to the type of bucket of market cap we're looking at, typically a large cap investment has a market cap of $10 billion or more. A mid-cap company has a market capitalization of between $2 billion and $10 billion. And then a small-cap company usually has a market capitalization of between $250 million and $2 billion. So large, mid, and small-cap type of companies are usually organized in that way. So to wrap this all together, let's say that you have a investment in your portfolio that's considered a small cap value investment. That means that the market cap will probably be in that range of about 250 million to $2 billion. The investment style is more value focused as we just described, and it could be an exchange traded fund or a mutual fund or an individual stock depending on how the investment is set up. So if you're looking at 
at your investment portfolio, whether it's maybe your Roth IRA or your 401k, when you look at the different types of investments, you may see small cap value, or you may see large cap growth, or you may see mid cap value. Now, after listening to this episode, hopefully you know a little bit more about what those individual investments mean. So I hope this podcast episode was helpful. I hope that it wrapped a lot of different topics together. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to me. You could send me an email at my email address listed in the show notes or description box below. Please follow us on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Like I said, everything will be listed down below. And if you would like to book a complimentary intro call with me, please do so. But thank you so much for listening to today's podcast episode. Thank you for your time. I hope the information in this episode was educational and insightful. I look forward to chatting with you in the next episode. And let's continue to grow our financial wealth and health together. The opinions voiced in this show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. This material was created to provide accurate and reliable information on the subjects covered, but should not be regarded as a complete analysis of these subjects. It is not intended to provide specific legal, tax, or other professional advice. The services of an appropriate professional should be sought regarding your individual situation. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. LPL Financial and Desert Wealth Management do not provide tax or legal advice. Clients should consult with their personal tax and or legal advisors regarding their circumstances. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC, Desert Wealth Management, and LPL Financial are separate entities.